popular now, apparently. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll. This is the Irish Institute of Music and Song. Today is our open day, so we're going to take you through a virtual tour with Niall Keady from Balbriggan News. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. Right, and Don, if anybody's any questions, they can type them in and, and, and I'll, I'll check them out to you. Yeah? Absolutely, just let me know. So, this Church Street is Balbriggan's oldest street. It is formerly known as George's Street, and we have George's Church up at the very top, beautiful church just next to the railway line. And this house was built in 1763, which was built by the Hamilton family, which was famous for bringing the, the mills and the factories to Balbriggan and putting Balbriggan on the map and in the dictionary. If you look up Balbriggan in the dictionary, you see uh, the famous underwear worn by Queen Victoria and latterly in the 20th century by famous John Wayne. So Balbriggan is connected to this house, so much history, so come on in. So everyone that takes the tour today will be wearing a mask. Niall's already wearing his mask. Thanks, Niall. So as you come in, I'd ask Niall to just do your hand sanitizer, please. Thank you very much. So we will have tours of five people maximum, and we'll come in in pods, and the tour will move together. So we'll imagine that we're all on a tour, and I will lead you through, just like we will be doing for the rest of the day. So this Bedford house, if you walk up the steps here, we'll take you into some of the bedrooms. Now, each of these bedrooms, these luxury bedrooms, have been named after a famous composer. Now, the first composer we have is Ina Boyle. She's a very, very prolific Irish writer. She was a famous composer and actually a, a beautiful pianist and one of Vaughan Williams' favourite piano students when she studied in the early 20th century in London. If you want to go in and have a look, we wanted to have Ina Boyle as the first room that you see here because Ina Boyle is not very well remembered. In fact, she has been mostly forgotten by, by music in Ireland, by artists in Ireland, by institutions in Ireland. So as an institution, as a brand new 21st century organisation, we wanted to make sure that Ina Boyle was remembered because one of our missions, our, our key mission is celebrating diversity through inclusion. I'm using music to do that. So having Ina Boyle try to place on the first room when we come up is a way of recognizing the contribution by so many women who've been forgotten in the Irish arts. So if you move on up, we'll keep, we'll keep this nice and, and, uh, and quick because there's so much to see, so many turns and, and twists and turns in this. We have Turlico Calaran room. So you can go on in there, Niall. Famous Irish harper, composer, and singer, and very famous for um, making, basically making the the music of Ireland um, very, very, uh, very special thing. And if we look through here, we can see this beautiful bathroom. I'll ask you to come over. This always takes our breath away. The amazing work done by Maria, who designed this room, as one of the key members of the Irish Institute Music and Song team. So there are many parts of the Irish musical story and we wanted to incorporate all the different identities of Irish music. So Turlock O'Carlan is one of those, coming from sort of traditional Irish. And then we have Bill Whelan, who more uh, more famous than the 20th century, of course, the composer of Riverdance. And you can have a look in there and see 
what we've done with the rim. So there's so much heritage in these old buildings, and we wanted to include the stories of the different artists, the different composers in this uh, in this building as the first port of call when you walk in through the campus. You see all these different composers and their, their own take on what it is to be Irish in music. The next room we have is Rhoda Call. If you had walked into RTE any time in the mid 20th century, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, you probably would have seen her at work. She was very, very busy as a pianist, accompanist, and composer working in RTE and uh, probably worked with every single famous composer, every famous musician, every famous singer and performer that came through the, the doors of RTE at that time. So she deserves a place, of course, in the Irish Institute of Music and Song. So all these rooms have been very carefully restored and each room will have a story about the composer and about how their music influenced Ireland and of course how their music influenced their students and therefore all the different people who made music in Ireland. So here we have the Michal O'Sullivan room, which is we won't be going into today but we'll go into the Sean O'Reader room. So both these composers from the 20th century made a huge impact on Irish music. Taking Irish, the idea of Irish music from classical into traditional and back through classical contemporary into jazz and into the popular mainstream through groups like the Chieftains. So we can see here Sean Arreda room, which is up at the very top of Bedford. And if you want to have a look out the window, you can get a a glimpse of perspective of where we are. So just overlooking Church Street, we're opposite Sunshine House and where the old Lara House used to be, another Georgian building. It was my granddad's house. No way. Yeah. Niall's granddad lived there in, what way was that? He had his workshop there. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's the thing, we, we're absolutely... Dick Bourne. Dick Bourne's house. We're absolutely in awe of the history and heritage in Balbriggan. And it, it's literally everywhere you look. When we walk through this town, there's so many stories in which the famous sack of Balbriggan coming up now. We've actually been writing a song to commemorate the event and uh, the, his, the history of, of the town here. But within this campus alone, we have so much of the history. Here we have Becky, who you will meet if you're coming down. Hello. If you're coming to the tour today, you'll see Becky at the door. She'll sort you out with everything. I'll be welcoming everybody in. Looking forward to seeing you all. Well done. So we can move on through. Got a great comments coming through, by the way. Oh, lovely. You're all very welcome. Good to see you. So this is the old parlour room or the breakfast room, which will be for anyone who stays in any of these rooms. This will be open to the public. It will be on Airbnb. You'll, get, you'll be able to rent it just like any other B&B or, or hotel. And this is where you'll have your, your meals. And uh, it's gorgeous character in this room. Again, lots of these things were in the building itself and we collected them to make sure that we had just the suitable kind of feel for this. Now, as you move through and we leave Bedford House, we have a look here at this trophy. So we have the Fingal International Festival of Voices, 2020. So this trophy was first prize in the choral competition at the festival, which took place in March, or didn't take place in March. On the 12th of March, we had to cancel, but we still have the trophy. So we have here the Raven, representing Fingal. We have Torque, the Celtic symbol of nobility, and then we have the ancient design marking our heritage here in this part of the country, and it's extremely heavy, made out of solid bronze. So you'll be able to have a good look at this, this historic piece, making sure that we will forever remember 2020 and COVID-19. So we'll keep this now as a museum piece forever. So as we come through, I'll ask you to mind your step as you come on. Now we are leaving Bedford House and we're going to move into the old nursing home, which was 
derelict one year ago when we moved in here. So come on, follow me. There's a lady on there, Helen Edwards, remembers the house with one of her parties. Oh yeah. She was very young. Well, there will be lots of musical parties happening. We haven't had any just yet, but once we get up and going. So here we have two of our teachers, Daniel and Leon, who are playing some guitar in this square. So this room. Hi guys. This room has been used for uh, lots and lots of different activities already in the last month or so. So we've had our Sounds Good uh, music camps in this room where we had kids uh, enjoying some music in July and August. We've had master classes back in February and early March where we had choirs from all over the world who used this space uh, in master classes with Michael Dawson. And we've also recorded in this room. So we've used it for audio recording and we welcome guests to make video recordings as well. So it's a multifaceted room. You can check out all the lights. We have a variety of displays, a variety of colors, so we can change the different feeling in the rooms. And if you want to have a look over here, we can see an artist's impression. This will work for me. This is the facade of the New Year's Institute of Music and Song. And it's a subject of planning permission, so it will not be will not be happening yet, but this is the idea. This is just a, an architect's impression of what it could look like. So this is the side. You can recognize that wall as you walk down that way. That's the back of the 400 seater auditorium. Thanks boys. Thank you. Well, we'll come to the auditorium. Oh, theater. Yeah. Wow. So now, this, as I said, is the nursing home. And now we've turned it into a 36 bed dormitory. So basically hostel accommodation. And this is going to be suitable for choirs that come to stay here overnight. Uh, groups from businesses that want to come for team days and any other groups that want to stay here making music. So each of the rooms which were part of the old nursing home are now named after famous Irish acts. So we have the U2 room here. We will have so many international groups and many of the groups don't actually know that U2 is from Dublin or the Cranberries are from Limerick. They don't know about Thin Lizzy being an Irish band. So this is a little bit of heritage. If you want to go in there now, you see do we hope the bands themselves will come one day and well, stay in their own well, room? One day in the, in the near future, hopefully, we'll have them in. So these are designed after Japanese style pods. Okay. So you might recognize them from kind of this idea where you can get in, you've got your plugs and you've got your own lamp here and you can charge your phone, you can put all your stuff in and we will be installing doors that we cover here. So you can get a little bit of privacy to learn your music or read a book. And when you leave, you put all your bags in, close it over, lock it, and then you'll be able to move on. And we'll take you out to that little garden in a, in a wee while. We also have toilets and showers in the rooms. So how many per room? On this side, it's four per room, four beds. And on the other side, which I'll show you now, it's six. And this is the Cranberries room. So these have actually already been used by a, a school choir from Kilkenny, Presentation Choir Kilkenny, which came for a master class with Michael. And uh, a few days later, they competed in a competition and took two prizes, two first prizes. Wow. So they're an excellent choir and they worked really, really hard when they were here, spent a night and uh, basically sang the whole time. Wow. So you can get a glimpse in each of these rooms, that's the Dubliner's room. And the Thin Lizzy room. And then the Planksty room. And the Chieftain's room. And the Planksty room here is actually a disabled access room. So it's got eight beds and it's the biggest with the access to a disabled toilet as well. Brilliant. And 
nearly 60 people on board here now, so a very popular tour. Yeah. Biggest one of the day. <laughs> yeah. So now we're coming through into the canteen. So this is where, when you stay in the beds, you get your breakfast and your dinner. It's self-catering. And this room also doubles as a rehearsal space, so you can actually uh, move all the tables and chairs, and you can sing in here, you can play your music. Hi guys! Hi. And we have Kira here, who's going to be on the tour later on. Uh, so this is a very special space. It's a really nice relaxed space for the groups who record here and they come in. They, they love having a musical canteen where they actually feel completely at home and they can feel like they're at work, to quote one of them. So it's a nice uh, homely space for, for all our visitors. Hi, Kira. Hi. And as we move through here, we have a fantastic space that we have just put together over the last few months. This is our amphitheatre. So we wanted to create a space which could cater for outdoor rehearsals, outdoor recitals, and also just a chill out space where people, if they're rehearsing all day indoors, they can come out and feel like they have a beautiful um, creative space to, to sit and relax. So this used to be a complete uh, dumping ground for the nursing home. So all of the bricks and stone that you see here is actually just a dumping ground in front of us. This piping is part of the heating system, which is in the, uh, in the nursing home. So we actually just recycled everything. And uh, this is Irish birch wood for the benches. And uh, yeah, it's actually a, a sun trap here, and we, we have it, the idea, once we get back to things, it would be a sunset recital. So the sun comes across the sky here, so it's always lit. And it's a beautiful space. We've already had a little performance uh, in our, uh, as part of the Sounds Good Summer Camp, actually. This is Sarah. Hi. This is Sarah her running around. How are we? Great to have you here, Van Brigham News. Enjoy. We'll see you later. So we'll take you around to the next part, which is on to the teaching studios, the teaching uh, where all the classes happen. Thank you, Kira. Bye. So this is kind of going around the back of the, the campus here. You see that the wall is intact all the way around. So this wall is the original wall and it's uh, protected. And it's just, again, reminds us of the, the heritage. That's the nice neighbor's dog here every day. And you see in on the right some of the teaching spaces and some of the offices which are mostly here. Hello. Yeah, how's it going? It's going good. It's going good. So this is Jess. Hi. Hey Jess. Hi. She'll be showing you around uh, the teaching studios when you come in here later on. And this is how we're going to work the one-way system for the, the tour. So moving through here, I'm going to be a one-way. So I'll just show you. This is our studio area. So this is where we edit our podcast, which is listened to. Uh, we have listeners from uh, 23 different countries around the world. And we also record some videos. So Michael and myself uh, did some videos during lockdown where we taught Irish language songs to children. And it was supported by Fingal Arts. And we just did it against this wall here. So some of you might recognise this. We did Oro Mabajin and uh, Oro Shilabahawalia, Trasna the Dante. And we've also done a recording of uh, uh, an Irish song, but this time for teenagers in China. So this was uh, somewhere where we, we try to put ideas together. You can see we've got sort of an ideas board here. And we put our, record our music in and we use this microphone for editing uh, overdubs on our, our podcasts. So this is the podcast we just put out yesterday. This is what it looks like. Um, Where are the podcasts? The podcasts are on our website, and they're also on Spotify, Apple Music. Just type in Spotify, Irish Institute of Music and Song, and you'll be able to see all the podcasts. We have 20 episodes. They include conversations with uh, choir directors in Canada, America, uh, in Germany, and then we have musicians from all over Ireland, teachers, performers, composers, uh, just conversations, talking about Irish music and Everything is basically coming out of Balbriggan and we're trying to get everybody to talk about music here in Fingal, music in Balbriggan and connect it into the different networks around Ireland and around the world. So this is a, a very there's important loads, space. There's loads of really positive comments coming through there. Helen Edwards and Marie Harding and Roisin Dawson. Good. Hello everybody. You're all very welcome to our virtual tour. 55 online now. Good stuff. 
So we, <laughs> yeah, 55, we definitely wouldn't be able to have 55 <laughs> together, but uh, the idea for when we do the tour will be groups, pods of six. So the tour guide and then five coming in from the public. So uh, it's a one-way system, as I've said, everybody will be wearing their mask. Just run through the times again for the, for the, for the uh, So the tonight. first tour will begin at 12 p.m. And it'll move, and the last tour will be admitted around 2 p.m. But if we're, if we're still busy and we're still flowing, it'll spill a little bit over then. But try to get down between 12 and 2, and we'll be able to take you around, just as I'm doing here, and you'll meet more members of the team. Wait. This is our boardroom, where it looks a little bit formal, but actually this is where we end up standing around and teaching each other songs and singing games. So working out rhythms and what we can teach. And so we all stand around, just like you're standing there, and we, we work ideas and we, we find sort of teaching ideas and teaching concepts and also practical um, sort of help, helping guides for each other. So it, it looks like a sort of traditional boardroom, but it most certainly is not. And then we'll move on through to one of our group classrooms. And if you want to look in there, you'll see This is where we have a lot of our group ukulele, group percussion, and actually we just got this amazing piano as a donation wow. from the owners of the Cost Cutter, which is down the street, uh, just, just behind us here. Lovely. So this is the local shop and we're just absolutely grateful. So this is going to help a lot of beginners, a lot of piano players, a lot of young musicians. So we're very, very grateful for that donation. Excellent. But this space, uh, we have... Um, yeah, loads of uh, violins are our, our library, the part of our library here. So this room is going to be very, very busy, very active uh, for the various musical classes that we're going to have. And then the next door, the next room, is another group room, but we're, we're yet to fill this room. It will be full of keyboards, and this will be the keyboard for the group piano room. So people will be able to sit down, and the teacher will sit up here. So you, the teacher will teach and say, okay, everybody, right hand, bars one to four, and you go, blah, 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 and everybody does it together. And then, okay, now left hand, blah, 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 and the teacher can see how everybody's getting along. So it's a good social, fun group scenario for learning piano. And we think that's very important for piano, especially because piano can be a very solitary instrument. And then we have two teaching rooms, just sort of basic all-round rooms for various instruments, including ukulele, guitar, flute, singing, piano, and uh, these are already being used by some of our students who have continued lessons through the summer. Most of our students have been learning online for the past few months, but there are some who have come in and we're able to uh, keep the, all the windows open, keep all the doors open, um, and then the teacher sits at a distance from the student. The student can sit here. We have made sure all the piano and all the surfaces are wiped down and the teacher wears a mask and if the student is over 12 years of age they also wear a mask and we're just very careful about that and make sure that everybody feels comfortable but also focusing on making music as a fun activity because if it's not fun then no one's going to enjoy it the teacher the student no none of the whole team is going to enjoy it so we're doing our very best to make sure that the energy in the t in the lessons even though they might be different is Still high energy, fun stuff. Sarah's here Hello again. again. She's <laughs> running around. I'm running around. I'm looking for blue tack this time. Pick some off the holsters. And we have actually, some of you might remember this. You just saw Sarah. This is Sarah's school, Cadence Music, which is now part of the Irish Institute of Music and Song. You might remember it was just on the square opposite the library. And uh, so we have the, the sign up here, but Cadence is now part of Irish Institute of Music and Song, so all the Cadence students come in here to these uh, beautiful spaces and they make music with all the students from all around Fingal who are now taking their lessons here. So we're going to go back in, you might hear the guitars, we're going to go back into, unfortunate to <laughs> remind us, but it's nice to remember how big it was going to be. Move back into the square, and we're going to move through into the bar. So this is a nice tranquil space. We call it the Narnia Garden. 
and you'll see there's some lovely apples and we have a lovely water feature here with some beautiful flowers and the water feature gives you a clue as to the name the Narnia Garden this is the lion the mythical lion Aslan and it's also a little nod to brilliant Irish band from Dublin Aslan but the reason why we call this the Narnia Garden is to sort of capture a little bit of the magic of Narnia and to realise that when you look north from Glubriggan Strand here and you look all the way up on a clear day, it might be a little bit too, a little bit, yeah, probably a little bit too cloudy today, but you can actually see the Cooley Mountains in County Loud and all the way to the Mourne Mountains in County Down, where I'm from. And the C.S. Lewis, who was the author of uh, Chronicles of Narnia, based Narnia on the Mourne Mountains. So this is just a little idea to remember the magic of this little place, but also the magic of the Mourne Mountains, which we can see from Balbriggan. But it also reminds us that we are connected so easily to Ulster of the M1. We're connected to Drada very, very easily, connected to Swords and to the airport, only 20 minutes away in the radius. And then obviously into, Balbriggan, into Dublin city centre, it's just down the road. So although, though this is a very tranquil little space, it reminds us that we're very close to everything, so it gives us a nice, nice sort of setting in that area. And then, as you move through, you'll, you'll recognise this again. You'll see Kira Hello again. from a different approach. And we can actually move through the amphitheatre now into a new garden. We have Owen and Hello. Owen. Oh, two. Hey. So you'll see Owen, both Owens probably playing some music later on when you come in. But here we have, some of you might have recognised this from uh, our Facebook posts. This is the Cranchol, the music tree. And this was a chestnut tree that we were told was dying and we had to basically, um, we had to take it down in some way. But we wanted to turn it into something creative rather than get rid of it altogether. So we kept the tree, we made sure that the roots uh, weren't uh, harming any of the soil or the other plants and flowers around it. <clears throat> and we used the tree itself as a sculpture. So we got an amazing world-class tree carver from County Waterford, John Hayes, from Special, special Branch Carvers, and got him in and he did this amazing job on this tree. So just to give you an idea of some of the stories within it, we have the tree itself. You saw the little piper, which we'll go around and we'll see again. You've got the boron up here. You've got the three singing faces. On the left, you've got a solo singer. And in the middle, you've got the opera singer. And on the other side, you've got an, a folk singer. So we've got all these different identities. Uh, again, back to our mission of celebrating diversity and inclusion through music. Everyone makes music, and everyone who comes through here is welcome to make their music. So we want all types of music to be represented. And we have here Paddy the Piper. So this incredible work, we've got the Illin Pipes and Paddy here who looks as if he's he's had a good night and making some good music there but actually if you keep going around now you'll see I, I, I have to say though um, I've, I've seen video of this and video it doesn't do this justice at all yeah you get all the different tones you, you really you actually, really need to come and see us when you go up and you can actually touch this incredible treble clef here so this is a melody that we've carved into the side and you see that it winds its way up here this melody is down by the sally gardens because when we came into this this uh, little place was known as the sally gardens by the former the previous uh, owner of the house but we carved this tune to remember all the former residents of the nursing home so we wanted to have this little tribute to them so this song, every time we walk past and we sing this song, we remember all the hundreds of people over the years who lived here. Uh, and up at the top, we have trumpet player, we have trombone coming up the left here. We've got a saxophonist leaning up towards us. And then we have a conductor at the top. Some of you, not sure if you can see that on the screen, it's very bright today. But it's a female conductor and actually based on Emer Noon. And you might know Emer Noon because she actually conducted at the Grammys last year. So she's probably Ireland's most famous conductor. And interesting, if you turned around and you went on the other side now, you could look up and see that the conductor is a male conductor. So it's a conductor with two faces. 
So on one side it's Emer Noon and on this side it's someone else. You can decide who, who it is yourself. So the Crown Kyol, an amazing piece by John Hayes. And then obviously we have here. What was the name of John Hayes's um Special Branch Carvers. Special Branch Carvers. He's on Facebook too, isn't he? Yes, he is indeed. I'm on Instagram. And this here is a harp. This was actually one of the branches. So instead of keeping all the branches intact, we uh, put this branch here as a harp. And we're going to get this harp strung so that you can actually play it. Brilliant. Brilliant. So you can sit here and play once we get it strung. So we'll move on through across. To the guitar garden. So this is unofficially the world's largest guitar. The world's largest guitar is in New Jersey and measures 43 feet. However, this measures 46 feet. So this is uh, is history in the in the making. And once we get this strung, we're going to make sure that we get some famous guitar players to come and actually play it. And and make, make a historic day. And this is Andy. Andy is responsible for all the, the beautiful garden and all the beautiful buildings around. He's been doing tremendous work over the past few months. Beautiful. He's really building beautiful. all this. So we're now moving into the last building as part of the tour. This is Russ Carrick House. This was Bob Brigham's original courthouse. So the judge's residence was this building next to us. So the judge lived in here and the jailhouse was below in the basement. So anytime you're walking along Church Street, you can look down and see where the jail actually was. So the criminals were brought up from the jail and into this building. So we'll, we'll come into this entrance here. Fascinating history, Don. It's absolutely fascinating. Incredible. Every single, every place you turn, it's just amazing, and we're just discovering. Thrilled. I'd say you're only starting to discover half the stuff as well. Yeah, it's, and, it's and when people come over, they have their own stories. You know, the local people, they know this place, they know the area, so they always fill us in on the gaps. So it's amazing. So as you come up here, We're moving upstairs and we'll see these beautiful rooms and this is kind of the last stop on the tour so you can just drop your head in there and um, lovely room is being restored up here just do your head effort yeah it, the ceilings are the doors are all very low and actually if you look at the, where the windows are they're very low as well so it's an interesting perspective. So that was the Phil Coulter room. And then here, there's another beautiful room, one of my favorite rooms. You can have a look at the bathrooms in there as well. This is the Thomas Moore room. So all these rooms are named after famous Irish composers. And then into the final room, which actually I must say, this room is my favorite. This is the Enya room, the Ethna Brennan room from Gidor, County Donegal, known as Enya. So we have here this incredible character in this room. It just screams at you when you walk in. It's got this lovely piece of detail up on the ceiling. And this obviously would have been where the drapes for the four poster bed came down. So That's all original. This, yeah. Wow. So the, the, this, this building, uh, was built in the 1830s so it's a bit later than the neighboring uh, Georgian house Bedford house which is the 1760s but this gives us a beautiful sense of the Victorian history that Bill Brigham has to offer so as I said over in the other house anyone can come in and use these bedrooms once we get up and running these will be open to the public they'll be on Airbnb They'll be on booking.com so you can just rent your room for the night or your weekend. And actually, we have a membership. So anyone can become a member of the Irish Institute of Music and Song. And that means that you can pay a subscription 
There are various uh, options to choose from. And then that means you get a discount on staying in some of these rooms. You also get a discount on our musical activities, our musical events and concerts. And you get the opportunity to uh, be a part of the history and the story of the Irish Institute of Music and Song. So you can always keep, keep, uh, keep in touch with us about the membership, because we'll fill you in on for launching it over the next month or two. So we're moving into the last part of this building, into the, one of the most interesting rooms on the whole campus. This is the session room. So this is where the, uh, the judge would hear the sentences for the criminals who came in the next door. So this, the criminals would stand roughly where I am. And we have some of our team here. We've got Rob Hello. and Leah. Hi there. Hi oh, yeah, everybody. I think I'll catch the manager. Sister, you've got Regan's finest on tour with us here. So the criminals would have stood around here. And at the fireplace there, that was where the uh, there was a door, and the judge came through that door and delivered the sentences for the criminals. So this was known as the session room, and uh, we're confident that there'll be lots of sessions here in the future. That absolutely beautiful room, which is going to be the members' room. So if you sign up for the membership that I just described, you'll be able to come in here and chill out, have a meeting, just casually get a cup of coffee and uh, enjoy this beautiful historic space. So when you come in here later today, you'll be able to speak to Leah about signing up for some of our new classes. That'll be group classes, one-to-one uh, -one tuition in loads of different instruments and uh, anything at all, Leah will be able to answer you behind this beautiful bar. Yeah. She's not serving any drink. No, not yet, me just for myself. <laughs> and you might hear Rob playing cello. He's got a cello on his back, you might see. So he'll, uh, he'll be able to serenade you all later. So the last room on the tour. Just if anybody wants to get some questions together there for the, when we get to the end. Sure. Sure. So this is the entrance and the old parlour, which would have been the, the welcoming room, the reception room for this old house. is just here on your right when you walk in. And this will be... Uh, two, this will serve two functions. This will be a meeting room for all our members. So anyone who has membership will be able to book this for an hour and sit in. Whether they're musicians who want to meet with uh, other musicians or um, if people are coming down from Belfast and people want to come up from Dublin and they want somewhere to meet a creative musical space, then they'll be able to have a business meeting here. And uh, this will be yeah, a beautiful space which people can actually hire out privately. But this room will also be the library for our folk music collection. So we're going to be uh, building up the library where um, we'll have all the, the books and scores and old archive material to be in this room. And have a look at the beautiful ceiling and a chandelier. It really is just an incredible, incredible room. And anyone is, is free to, to use this once they sign up to be, become a member. us to the end of the tour so if you come out I can bring you up to the, the start of the tour so the yellow door is the end and the red door is the beginning so let's head on up and I can answer some questions maybe yeah let's have a look around here for a second we'll just sure. get our bearings because a lot of people ask in particular yeah we have Sunshine House immediately across here we have St George's Church up at the top you see the spire there and then you've got the cut all the way down to the station which it's about a four or five minute walk doesn't take long at all to go all the way down and then up here you've got the corner which if we just turn right, it takes us to the library. It's very, very central. So, any questions there, Niall? Um, Jackie Keady, my wife, is watching. The garden is amazing. Wow, what an amazing piece of art. So beautiful, the arts a special branch. Fantastic renovation of a beautiful Victorian Georgian house from Vaughan Dawson. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up now. If anybody does have any questions, get them up there now, and uh, I can put them to Donald for you. Yeah, and thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Uh, we've been just trying to spread the word about this amazing campus, and we're gonna be welcoming. We've got a little bit of a queue starting, so I might just jump on and. Um, bring these people through to the yeah. to Bedford House. But yeah. any questions, you type them up in the on the Facebook or message us directly and we'll be able to get back to you throughout the day. Brilliant Donald. Thanks very Thanks much. Now. Thanks now. Thank you. Thanks for so the Bell Breaking News. Cheers okay, guys. See you. Bye.
Are you okay to go on and say hello? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your hair Well, folks, Mike Keely here by Brigham News. I hope you enjoyed that. It's great for uh, Donald to show us around, and uh, I'd really, really recommend coming down and having a look. Um, as it, the open day is all day today, and doing tours, and it's really, really worthwhile coming down and having a look. Uh, so, just thanks very much to all the guys, and wish we wish them the best of luck. And I really believe you know, that Brigham should really get behind this and get involved, and uh, we can really make something great here. Thanks very much.